Hello, this is Jess. This is uh, chat session number 15, November 15th, Wednesday morning around 7.45 a.m. Uh, we're going to go right into uh, the uh, little history that we try to do at the opening of each video. Uh, we're going to go back to 1867. The first stock ticker is unveiled in New York City. The advent of the ticker ultimately revolutionized the stock market by making up-to-the-minute prices available to investors around the country. Prior to this, development information, I'm sorry, prior to this, uh, development information from the New York Stock Exchange, which has been around since 1792, traveled by mail or messenger. Uh, that, uh, Thomas Edison was involved with this. There's a, lot, a little more to this story. I just try to give them the main part of it on this date, but uh, Thomas Edison invented a better version of the original stock market ticker and was able to uh, sell those and make a little money and opened up his office where he went on to do all his inventions like the light bulb and different things that he uh, was involved with. So a lot of good stuff happened from this little invention. Okay, now we're going to go on to uh, 1956. Uh, Love Me Tender, featuring the singer Elvis Presley in his big, uh, big screen debut, premieres in New York City at the Paramount Theater. Elvis sang in the majority of the 31 movies he would eventually star in. In Love Me Tender, Elvis Presley plays Reno, the younger brother of a Confederate soldier. Uh, I may have seen this movie, uh, I'm not gonna say I can't recall it this time but I will uh, actually go and check it out uh, I like his movies are pretty they're just different so I enjoy that kind of stuff all right so now we've uh, done a little history stuff a uh, little sports insert uh, New England Patriots coach uh, Belichick is uh, one win away from passing Tom Landry for the third most wins in NFL history Kudos to Tom Landry and kudos to Belichick for being right there with him. Two really uh, amazing coaches. Uh, I prefer Landry over Belichick, but can't take away the credentials and the, the wins that Belichick has accumulated as well. Uh, coffee's good. I worked last night. Uh, I always like to have a little bit before I go in there and get ready to lay down and go to sleep. Uh, okay, now on with the uh, chat session. Uh, I, I'm really uh, perplexed um, by the brainwashing that's been going on apparently with uh, I guess communities all across the country, but the focus right now would be on Alabama and and the, and their willingness to vote for some guy that apparently has been abusing his power and stepping out of the guidelines of his position as, as a DA. Um, you know, they have proof, you know, that they, they're showing that he was banned from the mall because he was... Uh, Harassing, you know, young girls, you know, 16, 15 years old kind of stuff. Uh, now he's older. He may have changed. Uh, you know, he may not be that same guy he was back when he was 30. But uh, I think that there is a price to pay for public service and, and being transparent and, hey, you know... The, he never, he could have come out and said, yeah, I used to be that kind of guy, but I'm not anymore. And none of that came up. Somebody brought it up, and now he's all mad about it, saying that he's being harassed by the media. But what's most perplexing to me is that the people in Alabama are like, we're still going to vote for him because we don't want a Democrat to win. And I don't know the other person that's running in the race. Uh, 
so what, he's a Democrat, this guy's a Republican, uh, a, a bad person is, is a bad person is a bad person, uh, I'm not saying he's not good now, I'm not saying that he hadn't tried to improve his life and learn from his mistakes, but uh, I don't, I don't know the man, uh, I just know that when you're talking about being a senator, you know, you can't be using your seat or your position, you know, of authority to go out and manipulate stuff and do things that are wrong. And when you're 30 years old, you should hopefully know the difference uh, as well. But apparently, some people learn slower than others. Uh, but I think I think that you should he should drop out of the race. Um, and I think that the people of Alabama need to really examine what they are looking for in an elected official. You know, y'all, you know Alabama didn't have Medicaid expansion, I believe. Alabama's just, they're just, they're so downtrodden on their on their population inside the state. Uh, and yet, the people think, you know, they're forced, they're doing what they can and stuff. You know, I, I, I hope that, and I'm not trying to be rude or down on Alabama or anything. I'm just saying that, that we're moving forward as a country and, all these fractioned out people that want to bring up, you know, uh, the old school politics, you know, all that stuff's over with. We're done with civil, you know, the civil rights movement. We had it. I've grown up in a, in a, in a society that I, I never had no problem with anybody, uh, black, you know, Mexican, white. Uh, Chinese, it don't matter, um, whatever, but I think that these old school po politicians that are still trying to come up and make rules to, you know, play down on minorities and play down on stuff, and it, it's just, I, I don't get it, why it's accepted, why they just don't tell the guy to be quiet. We don't want to hear that no more. We're moving forward. We're trying to build a better society with all the people that are involved in it, not just one race or, you know, whatever. I, I just don't understand why it has to continue. You know, if I cut myself, I bleed red. If, you know, if my, you know, my black buddy cuts himself, he, he bleeds red. If my Mexican buddy cuts himself, he bleeds red. You know what I'm saying? I, I just think that we should learn how to treat people by how they treat us and not by their color of their skin or, or that kind of stuff. You know, even their beliefs. You know, they're, if they're not doing any harm to anybody, uh, you know, our intent, you know, with physical harm, you know, yeah, let them be and... Not, you don't have to embrace it. You can just say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm existing with these people. It's okay. Uh, but the, the core of this whole thing is we have all these positions in our government that are being given to people that aren't deserving of it by whatever means of trickery and deceit and lying and and uh, making up stuff and exaggerating the truth, uh, you know. I think we, as, as a country, we need to step back and, and uh, examine where we've been to get us to where we are now and examine what we want and examine what's best for our country. I have a lot of radical ideas. I'm not about to share them because I, it's my beliefs and I'm not ready to get off into all that because uh, it just, you know, whenever you try to present your ideas, sometimes other people get all on one side and have to like blow it out of proportion and 
I'm not into all that. I have my beliefs and I try to live by them, but I don't impose them on anybody. Uh, I just, I also treat people the way that I think they, you know, I would want to be treated, and I hang around with people that fit into that category as well. Um, you know, I've, along the way, I've had very few, few people that I would truly call friends because they treat me the right way and I treat them the right way and it's been that way ever since I've known them so this whole racist thing that's been going on Obama was elected president and it just caused all this turmoil and all this stuff you know the heck with it it's so stupid black white who cares just treat everybody with respect and let's get on, let's move forward, let's try to make it better instead of dredging up stuff that was wrong and, and uh, we know that it was wrong and we can work on improving it. I mean, that's how, that's how I see it. Now, other people have their views, yeah, well, history is important, yeah, history is important. There's all kinds of history, I read about history every day when I do these videos. Um, but I think that we should, as a people, learn to embrace the past by pushing forward with a betterment. Let's make things better. You know, we have a, a, a growing population of elderly people. Let's make it better for the elderly people. You know, let's let's get rid of the greed and the corruption that's that's been allowed to exist in our government and in our public servants in our cities and in our schools. Let's clean up our mess. You know, we are the people. And we should be proactive in that regard. You know, I'm ashamed to say I don't know a whole lot about where I'm at. I mean, I talk and I'm saying all this stuff. You know, I got a lot of work to do myself to, to uh, get back and reacquainted with dealing with the bureaucracy and the city stuff that goes on. Years past, I was involved. I went to city council meetings. I did all kinds of stuff, you know. But that's all past now. Here I am. So the awareness, again, isn't the whole part of the battle. You know, being active and in the pursuit of betterment, you know, is the other key to it. So anyway, okay, I'm, I'm rambling on. Uh, this is a topic that I have a lot to say on, but I'm going to cut it short now. Uh, this is Jess, chat session number 15, Wednesday, November 15th. Uh, have a great Wednesday. I enjoyed my coffee, enjoyed the chat. So let's uh, go ahead and close with our little uh, closing that I try to use every time, you know. Be truthful, be happy. Let's look out for each other, okay? Till next time, have a great Wednesday.